Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it is Max Effort Monday, and today I decided to do a lift I haven't done in a while, because I realized it would be a fantastic test of my strength, and I decided to do the three-inch deficit deadlift. Um, I didn't get the lift I wanted to get today. I was a little disappointed in that. Uh, I'm going to accept it. I'm going to own it. However, when I went back and checked my logs, this was a 15-pound PR over the last time I tried this lift like five or six months ago but realistically I, I did expect it to be better than that um, and I ended up getting like here I'm still ramping up this is 295 I got to 515 515 felt a uh, hair slippery in my grip but I realized I just didn't have enough chalk on so I chalked a lot harder and went up to 535 because so I realized the 515 wasn't really a grind it wasn't that bad it just felt a little slippery in the grip right felt a little slippery on the hook grip so more chalk but again 15 pound PR but here's the thing guys I'm gonna have to own it and we have to look at these things and say okay why did I why did I miss this lift what about me needs to be stronger because you know people will say well you haven't been doing heavy pulls lately really heavy deadlifts for you so you haven't been practicing struggling and straining on a deadlift and that's true that's true. However, I shouldn't have had to struggle with 535, even on a three inch deficit. You know, we could again stand there and say, well, I mean, the three inch deficit takes a ton off of your deadlift, at least 10%. Right, we could make these arguments. And, and again, that's a fine argument. But if my back was stronger, this wouldn't have been a struggle anyways, and I would have just locked it. Therefore, I have to accept that I have to make my back stronger. I have to see right there. Bam. I just couldn't. So I'm using that compensatory strength trying to grind it up. And that's all I had. All I had. So we'll get to assistance work in a minute. Now, some people are going to notice we're going to do every other workout. It's going to be squat and deadlift variations. It's going to be squat and deadlift variations on max effort. And I'll do assistance work for the other one. So days like this where I hit a max effort deadlift, I will do a little bit of volume on some sort of box squat, maybe just a normal box squat, right? And these are hard. After missing a deadlift, man, I didn't want a box squat. Like these just felt awkward. They felt awful. First set was really looked like a big old giraffe flopping around. <laughs> but then I got into my groove. But they're, they're just fatiguing at that point. And my clients... You guys are loving this one. Oh my gosh, a lot of my coaching clients who I make do sets of five to eight on the box squat all the time who hate me so much. You guys are going to enjoy this. Enjoy this. Watch it. Cherish it. Love it. But that is 322 for sets of eight on a 12 inch box. Uh, but they're hard after, after doing the deadlift. Those are tough. And I don't normally do much in the way of rep work like that. And so people are saying, what happened to the one-legged work? I'll still do it. It's just going to be on my squat days, right? Because I feel like on the deadlift days, we need a little bit of volume on some box squatting. Make sure I get some quad work in, but I don't need to be as quad specific. Because I know my quads are a weak link on my squatting. I know they need work, right? We know I need thicker quads. And the same thing with my, my back and my erectors. And my erectors on that deadlift. A lot of people say, well, you've got big quads. You have big erectors. It's like, well... I have 500 pound squatter quads. And that, that's big, yeah, that is big. But I need 550 squatter quads. I need 600 pound squatter quads. I don't have the quads of a 600 pound squatter at my height, right? So I need to get them there. Same thing, I mean, we could look at the deadlift and say, okay, well, I mean, I mean, pull on a five, five whatever, low 500s off of a three inch deficit. I mean, we know that you're well above that. Well, that's well and good. Could I walk over and could I pull straight up comp legal 600 at this exact moment? I don't know if I could. I'm moving in that direction. I don't know if I could right now. Well, that's a problem. Why? My back's not strong enough. And I could tell as I was doing uh, that deadlift of where I felt the weakness and that's what's great about these, these assistance movements like that. And people who don't understand conjugate, with conjugate, basically you're hitting maxes on assistance movements. If you think of, about them from that perspective, a deficit deadlift, chain deadlifts, band deadlifts, all these things that you're doing, these are assistance movements. 
Same for your squatting and benching. They're assistance movements. Why do we do assistance movements? To get stronger at our weak points. Well, you should be strong at every assistance movement then. Meaning, if there's an assistance movement to help with different weak points, you shouldn't be weak at any assistance movement. It works. It works with the system. If you think about it logically, if you do, I don't know, seven different assistance movements every year to a max for your, your classic lifts, you should be strong at all six or seven of them. So if you're bad at one or you can see where the weakness is in your assistance movement, then you need to get better at it. And in my case, I could feel my whole middle back. Like I felt my middle back give out. It wasn't a case of, oh, Jason, you just need to grind through. You need to switch. No, I was too weak. And we have to own that. My middle back is too weak. My middle erectors, my lower traps. All right, I need to get that area thicker and stronger. So that's going to be a little bit of a priority for now on my deadlifting. Because if that area gets stronger, and if my deficit deadlifts improve, then all my deadlifts improve. I mean, obviously, sumo is the priority right now, but we need to be strong at everything. I need to be strong at a, a three-inch deficit. You know? I need to be able to pull 585 off that three-inch deficit. That's what I need to do. Well, how are we going to do that? I need to add 50 pounds of strength to my middle back. So... Good mornings today. The safety bar is gone. Why? Because I can get more weight on there and more tension on that area. Take some of it off the traps and the neck and everything. Brings it a little lower down. Let's use a little bit more weight. Crank out six sets of ten. Now I need to get really strong at these. I need to get strong at barbell good mornings. With a nice decently wide stance like that, I've got to get strong at these. It'll help all my lifts, it'll help my squatting, it'll help my deadlifting. But I know my whole middle back is a weak link in the deadlift, and it's not that it's weak. And people have to remember that. When we talk about these things, we're not saying that they're not strong. We're saying that they are our current weak link in our lifts. Right? They're our current weak link in our lifts, and you are only as strong as your weakest link. And we need to be all around strong. We need to be all around strong. And so I'm going to have to work that area. I'm going to have to work it harder. I'm going to have to do more training for it. Because really, what, what does strength come from? Our maximum effort, our, our rate of force production, and our hypertrophy. Okay, I need to thicken those muscle fibers up. I need to thicken those fibers up. And then I'm going to tackle them with some training volume. Now, fortunately, there's some nice movement pattern benefits to this. There's a lot of other muscles involved. But I need to get real strong at good mornings again really strong at good mornings and you know what my lifts will go up it'll help my squat and my deadlift both and if i combine that with the extra quad size then my squats will go up but the deadlifts have got to improve and just like the bench has to improve i know what i have to do to get my bench up right i've got to get my pecs and triceps bigger and stronger got to get faster i've got to get better at my speed work i need to be more explosive so there's a lot of work to do. And, and we accept those things and we work on those things. We have to get all around strong, but that is the, the benefit of a system like this. We do all these different variations because it is about being all the way around strong. Because someone who is strong at six different types of deadlifts and six different types of squats and six different types of presses is completely all around strong. That's not a power lifter. That is a strength athlete. You combine that with all your explosive training, your conditioning work, and then you become an all-around athlete. That's why I do the box jumps. That's why I do all the, the farmer's walks. Got to get better. About being all-around strong. And to me, that deficit deadlift, even though it was a PR, and a lot of people say, Jason, I can't believe you just hit a 15-pound PR for the last time you did it, and you're complaining about it. I'm complaining because it wasn't good enough. It's not good enough. All right. I'm, I'm in it to win it at this point. I can't accept mediocrity like that. So we train harder 
We train smarter. Find your weak points and you attack them. So six sets of ten on this, this today. You know what? I'll probably do the same thing come Thursday after my speed work. All right, we'll do the speed work, then we'll come do more of these barbell good mornings and get stronger at them. Start focusing on progression and volume. Yeah, I'll keep doing a bunch of sets of ten. Five, six sets, ten, eight, twelve, whatever I have to do. But I have to get stronger. I gotta start getting more weight on the bar. More workload. I've got to get my middle back stronger. I need my back in general stronger. Because we could argue the back is less important on the sumo, and that's fine, but we need to be strong at everything. And it's not gonna hurt my sumo for my back to be stronger. Attack your weak points until their strengths. And then find the next one and the next one and the next one. All right, strength is a choice. And if you can't accept your weak links and own them and work on them, you're not going to get stronger. It's just what you have to do. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.